And before we move to the survey, uh, in two weeks for the community call on 20th, a lot of us will be away and unavailable for the call. So we decided to cancel the community call. And uh, yeah, so just don't join for it. Join for the one after on 17th November or somewhere in the middle on 3rd November. And also a week later, so in three weeks, we will have the KubeCon office hours. So you should be able to register for that virtually. Uh, so you can just find it on the KubeCon schedule and, uh, and sign in. And that should bring us to the Streams survey. Last time we stopped here around the restarting the operator for reconciliation issues. So the next question is uh, use service monitor instead of pod monitor by default. So I think that we are actually not using pod monitors. They are part of the examples for monitoring which we have, but you can use whatever you want and whatever you prefer. The problem with monitoring is that everyone has differently deployed and configured Prometheus. So someone would want to use service monitors, someone would want to use pod monitors, someone doesn't care about either of those because they actually don't use the operator at all. So over the time, we actually learned that the best thing to do is to do as little as possible. And that's why we, for example, don't create the pod monitor resources from the operator, but yeah, we really leave it to the user to create whatever they want. So if you want, you should be able to use the service monitors as well. Anyone else have something to this point? Okay, hearing nobody, I guess we move to the next one. Sometimes the probes have been a problem in deciding for Zookeeper. I guess here it would be useful to know more about the issue and have some locks and so on. Do you understand them to mean the readiness probes or? I assume this means the readiness probes. Yeah. So one thing I know from my experience is that the zookeeper startup and kind of joining the cluster is quite sensitive to available CPU. And if you give it a lot of CPU, it always kind of starts on the first try and joins the cluster. But if you give it only a little CPU, 
then it often kind of loops few times while it's trying to join the cluster. I don't really understand why. And once it actually joins the cluster, it seems to run fine, even with the little CPU. But if it doesn't have like one CPU, for example, at least the startup is sometimes a bit weird and quirky. But I'm not sure if this is the issue the user is having. Uh, it's hard to speak and type at the same time. Anyone else has something to this? Okay, uh, next one is missing restriction or validation on the custom resource YAML, for example, authorization won't really work if there's no authentication and so on. So this one particularly, I'm trying to remember, but if you try and add an authorization or authentication, whichever way around it is, to your listener, I think the operator will then tell you next time that it hasn't worked because you need it. But I guess what they're asking for is for it to be when you try and make the change, it rejects you immediately rather than the operator having to tell you that you've missed something. Because I I always forget to turn on the right things when I'm turning on authorization and authentication and I, especially creating a user. But I found always the operator has given me enough information to remind me what to do. I don't think the operator tells you anything. It will just set it up the way you request. I think one of the complication is that it is not always easy to decide what you want. Uh, it's true that the situation where the users decide to enable authorization, but for whatever reason, don't enable authentication is fairly common. But at the same time, there are, for example, users who intentionally have authorization enabled, and then they have authentication on one listener, but they don't have authentication on the other listener. And they have some rules set up for the anonymous user on the listener without authentication. They, when they, for example, want everyone to be able to read the messages, but only someone to write, it might seem not ideal from the security perspective, but I know that there were some users using this. So I don't think you can that easily decide that, yeah, if you have authorization, you need to have authentication on, uh, on all the listeners. Yeah. Because while most users would want that, it's not that all of them really or in all cases, it really makes sense. If it's the other way around though, if you've added authentication on one of your listeners, is it then incorrect to not have authorization enabled at the top level? Is no. that the No? It's, it, they actually don't depend on each other. Yeah. But the problem is that when you don't have authentication, any client which connects connects as a anonymous. Yeah. 
Yeah, I so, think the, when I... so the issue often is that the users think they are connecting as user A, they set up the ACLs for user A, but because they don't have the authentication, they are actually connected as anonymous and the ACLs don't match them, so they get ACL denied. Yeah. yeah, I think when I've hit problems before, I've always been using a user, which then adds more complexity, but also adds an additional check that then you can tell if your user isn't working properly. Um, you can't, for example, with TLS users, because yeah. if you use TLS authentication, then the client basically connects and doesn't really care whether the authentication was needed or wasn't needed and is used by the broker or not. I think another issue is that actually the CRDs in Kubernetes, especially on older versions, they are a bit limited in what validation you can do. So you can't set up too complicated rules. Uh, it's actually some new support in Kubernetes 125, but it's not available on older Kubernetes versions. Okay, anyone has something more to this? It's probably a very naive comment, but are admission webhooks um, any part of a solution here? You can use webhooks to hook the operator into validating the resources when they are created but you can't really deal with the things like in most cases when you enable authorization you want to use authentication on all listeners but actually not always because the webhook would give you only binary answer yes or no and i, I remember from previous discussions as well there are issues with webhooks being cluster scoped um uh, which make them less usable or less user-friendly in, in some situations. Yeah, you would, the webhook is quite complicated if you have, for example, multiple versions of the operator installed because each one might validate it differently. 
and you want to really avoid the uh, fighting. Yeah, we've definitely had problems before with webhooks fighting each other. The other thing we could do, if, if there are specific checks that we think most people would want to be aware that they're doing something that's slightly unusual, what we don't want to prevent is we could add more warning conditions, but that the con affairs, obviously, you're then potentially cluttering up people's conditions if they're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, we talked about the UI, so we will skip this. Uh, lack of community edition on Slack. Also, mostly it's only Jakub Scholz who answers that. Uh, who is this guy? I never heard about him. Uh, I think we have actually quite a lot of community users. It's true that the Slack discussion might sound, seem a bit one-sided sometimes, but it doesn't mean that others are not using Streamzy. It just yes. means that there's one guy who's fast at answering questions. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot. The impression I get is there are plenty of people using Streamzy. Um, I don't know what community adoption means um, in terms of people perhaps contributing or answering questions, then that definitely is a much lower number than the number of people using it. But it definitely, to me, at least seems like if you just look at the Slack, the questions are coming from often different people um, who are uh, doing different things with Strimzy. And yeah, in terms of yeah, of answering the questions, um, yeah, you're just really fast. <laughs> okay, like this. I guess the only follow up question would be, are there things we could be doing to increase contributor? Um, numbers or things like that but i think that's potentially a whole separate discussion um if that's what they mean by community adoption also i would add that some of the users of streams if we use it in production they are also listed on the website and in the adopters file and if you are listening to this and you are using streams in production and you are not there yet, please open a PR to add yourself to that list. But uh, I think it's, I mean, I think it's a bit of a weird question, but at the same time, I think it's uh, kind of insightful. Um, I mean, I, I myself not participate on the Shudy channel. Uh, uh, <laughs> So it's something uh, I think I think I think everybody as a team we should try to be more active just to avoid you being the only person. So it looks like a bit one-sided. Um, I mean, I, I think it's uh, the, the, the balance between uh, you want to to help users fast, but I wonder if sometimes it's just too fast. Like uh, basically, yeah, nobody else has a chance to um, to answer. I think, I think there is a, what would be the best would be like somebody else in the meeting, not necessarily else, is able to, you know, people are able to help each other. Um, but obviously, we don't want, I mean, obviously, we don't want to leave uh, an answer the question for days. Uh, but I wonder if we can, 
can say, well, okay, well, you know, we leave things for, or you know, apart if it's something very uh, specific or very complex, where basically it's unlikely many people will be able to answer. But for something more open, I wonder if we leave time to people to answer, or 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 if you or if you or if you Jacob should uh, should say, well, you know, it's a very basic question. I feel like somebody else from the community or from the team to stream should be able to answer. Please do it for me. Um, just to get a uh, bunch of different people interacting, so it, be, it looks more alive and lively. You, know? you ask for it, Mikael. There's a guy asking about Mirror Maker too, who definitely can use your help. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, uh, it's uh, my fault as well. I never, I never read this this chat, <laughs> so I should definitely go there. Can if I can help, and obviously reading the answer is also helpful to learn and to. I can so, I can ping you there. Uh, well, I, I can find it, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I wonder if uh, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a responsibility to let not let you answer everything. <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, I don't know what the other think about this, but. Uh, um, you know, I think in event streams we had some days where one person would be assigned to answering the channel, just to get uh, a bunch of different faces out and to just to avoid. Because I see many people now ping you directly. Uh, this is not nice, right? <laughs> you don't I, I actually don't reply to direct messages about people asking for help on Slack. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I mean. I just... Yeah, that's the only thing you can do. If you start answering, it's uh, yeah, it's the end, basically. But I wonder if we should try actively to just uh, put different people and, uh, and encourage other people to answer if possible, you know. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, if someone has the budget, I think a positive encouragement as in you get swag for answering the questions and helping people. That sounds like something to make sense, but trying to assign some answer duty as in this week you are responsible for answering, next week someone else will be, and so on. I don't think that's how it should work. Yeah, I'm not saying that's that's the best way, or you know, just uh, I think we should try to to avoid. This channel being you versus the world, because <laughs> this kind of looks like this sometimes. One of the things that um, I don't know how many people are aware of, but maybe it's worth sharing on this call in case people don't know, is there is the Strimzy Dev channel as well. So if people are wanting to engage and are wanting to contribute and things like that, the at least I've observed there's a fair amount of chatter going on on there, which is nice to see, um, you know, who's working on what and, and what people are doing and asking questions. I can't remember how long that channel's been around. Maybe it's been around for ages and I only recently found out about it. But um, yeah, that's a useful channel for people to be aware of. Okay, anything more to this topic? I'm not sure we got to any conclusions about what Mikhail was talking about. But maybe if you want to go through that deeper, it might be better to leave it for one of the other community calls for the sake of finishing the survey? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think the other thing is worth noting is what I've observed is that Jakob doesn't, it is possible to beat Jakob to the answers and also he doesn't answer every single one. Like I have managed to get in there and answer some first. So it is possible <laughs> to, to answer them before Jakob. So what people are saying is you need a reward for beating Jakob. It's like a, a game show with a buzzer. Um, what do I win if the reward is for beating me? <laughs> uh, 
So, uh, I mean, answering question is a great way to learn. So, if you know, for people getting started, like uh, as the kids uh, prove how well you know streams, are you able to answer a question this week? You know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've done that a lot with Kafka on Stack Overflow. I would basically go daily and say, can I answer a question? And uh, the month you to realize, okay, now I can answer a few questions, so I'm starting to learn. Okay, should we move on? Yeah. Okay, I think lack of integration with MSK, I think someone answered it for every single question. Let's get to it when it shows up in the next section. Uh, topic operator reliability. Does anyone want to say <laughs> something to that? This is a known issue. So Tom Bentley is not here, so we can promise that he will fix all the topic operator issues. But of course, if anyone watching is interested in helping fix topic operator issues, I'm sure Tom would be happy to have other people helping as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, unfortunately, the topic operator is fairly complex with the bidirectional synchronization and it indeed has some bugs so sorry for that there was also a girl called tom c that was looking at fixing it i don't know what happened to him there was a lot of people who did some work on the topic operator and they usually run away <laughs> Yeah, um, if anyone is interested in contributing to this, the topic operator is definitely one of the areas where we are looking for contributors. So ping us. I'm not sure there's much more to say about it here, I'm afraid. So the next section is about if people considered contributing to Streamzy, what were the biggest obstacles? So the first one is the tight integration between components, uh, adding features, fixtures to one component requires changes to the other components as well. Think authentication mechanism for cluster operator and user operator. My view is that that's probably true, but at the same time, I don't think an open source project like Streamzy can work as a dumping ground where everyone comes, does the piece of code which he needs for himself and then leaves the rest for someone else to finish. I think it needs to have some direction and yeah i think that's why for example if an authentication is added in one place it might make sense to support it in the other places as well yeah i think it's a tricky balancing act in terms of, yeah, 
I've definitely had the experience where there's changes that I've sort of picked up and thought, oh, th you know, this this should be a fairly self-contained change. And then it's ended up blocked by other things. The one I'm thinking of is the securing the Connect REST API. Um, but I, I think, like you said, I think it's a balancing act of there are some changes that on the face of it might feel small, but then once you dig into it, because Strimsy is very complex, it requires a lot of thought and a lot of implementation in different places. And yeah, how do you balance that out? Because we don't want to end up with lots of features of, that have been added without thinking through the consequences and making sure that they're sort of fully thought through. Uh, but I can understand that being frustrating when people are wanting to add things. I'm a bit, uh, there's, there's a part I'm not quite sure I fully grasp here. But, because when you make a chain, say you are, you add some authentication mechanism to one of these operators, I guess you can test that in the isolation and validate your thing works. I mean, if you're not aware of the tight integration, I guess at this point you would open a PR. And I might not the role of the maintainer to say, well, look, wait, this is used in other places. For us to accept this chain, we want like the, the full complete chain to be applied everywhere. And I guess then that's the role of the maintainer to work with the user to figure out like, uh, I mean, I can help you do this thing, but you know, but at least if you can validate that the change you made in one operator makes sense and we can apply the same logic elsewhere. You know, it's a bit easier for, it's not like you start make a change and it's good to say, oh, I got to do it everywhere, you know. Uh, uh, I wonder if you can come with a smaller change, you know, get a PR and get a discussion going and uh, work with the maintainer or whoever reviews your, your PR just to, Complete it as if you know. this happens quite often in Kafka. Somebody comes with a small chain and say, Well, you know, <laughs> you got to make the same thing on the consumer side, for example. Um, but you know, if it's broken here, let's fix, let's work on a way to get this working and then we can reapply it somewhere else. I think you can work with the maintainer to add the other parts to it. Yeah. But I don't think you can expect that you add the feature in one small place where you need it and then leave it to the others to do the rest for you if they actually don't need the feature or are not really interested in it right so there's yeah, definitely so Definitely not a problem to open a PR for something and then work with the maintainers to add the rest of it. Because I think actually like the commit in one place, I mean, uh, and you get it working. I mean, uh, in most cases, reapplying to another operator should not be extremely hard. I mean, obviously, there's some corner cases probably, but. Uh, well, it specifically mentions authentication, right? So that's actually different implementing the user management in the user operator and the server part in the cluster operator. But it's also how the functionality would be tested, right? Without the support in the cluster operator, it cannot be really tested in the user operator, which is something we will get to as well, a little bit below around the Amazon MSK, for example. But yeah, that's the testing is one of the problems as well. But yeah, here's the recommendation to, to overcome the obstacle is to work with the maintainer just to, to see like uh, how much you need to do at least. And, uh, uh, so yeah, how much you need at least to, to get your change in basically. Uh,
Okay, next one. Okay, support for multiple streams of Kafka clusters per namespace. Tried contributing back to the project, but did not got allowed. I assume this means did not got allowed by the organization or employer. I wondered if that was, I was trying to remember, is there a, was there a feature request or something where someone wanted to update the operator to make it possible for you to have multiple Kafka clusters in the same namespace? Can you, you can have as many Kafka clusters in the same namespace as you want, but the user and topic operators will you start have. conflicting because yeah. with the user operator, you can have given username exist only in one cluster. And with the topic operator, that ties a bit to the previous question. It goes a bit crazy, but essentially, yeah, it has also problem with the same topics existing in the same namespace. Yes, yeah, the issue that I remember seeing, I think, was exactly that where someone was asking about having with creating multiple like topics in the same namespace and having one in one cluster and one in a different cluster and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so I sort of interpreted it as they'd proposed some change around this area and it was rejected by the Strimsy community. Um, but I might be misinterpreting the comment. Okay, then we can split it. So I don't remember any change which would get rejected by the community. No, I just remember but it from I, issue triage, I think. I don't think there's any real solution to the user operator and to the topic operator. At the end, the resource can exist only once with given name, but you often share the same usernames and topics between the clusters. Like this, does it make sense? Yeah. But yeah, I guess worth noting for people that you can have multiple clusters in the same namespace, but yeah, as you say, if you start using the user or topic operator, that's where it gets complicated. Then the next one is the legal requirement from my organization. I guess that's said, but there's not much we can do about it. I mean, it's Apache to license without any CLA. I mean, it's uh, as <laughs> as open as you can get. Well, as uh, enterprise friendly as we can get pretty much from the open source project. Yeah, but I remember from my own experience, discussion with lawyers insisting that, for example, 
German law doesn't allow you to give up responsibility for the software. So if you, for example, contribute something, your company can be sued by anyone if the software has a bug inside, for example, and so on. So I agree with you that it probably cannot get easier, but I'm afraid there are cases where even that's not enough for the lawyers. Yeah, I mean, then you just can't contribute to uh, an open source project if that's the case. Yes. Yes. Okay, anyone, anything else to this? Okay, my limited understanding of Kubernetes. Uh, I have about nine years of hands-on experience with Kafka, but sometimes streams, it does not behave like the one of non-pod ones and my perceived skill level. So I guess to that, I can say that we have all kind of good start issues. So even if you have limited understanding or think your own skill level is not good enough, then I think some of the good start issues, they should be good places to start. And in the community, we have a lot of people who will be definitely willing to help you and take you through the process. So don't be afraid and try it. And also there's a lot of ways how to contribute without writing code, such as documentation, or as we talked before, helping others on Slack and so on. And we can definitely use hands-on experience with Kafka people as well even if just maybe telling them how would they do things differently, how they do things, and maybe we find better solutions for everyone. I guess just on the behavior of um, Strimsy versus non pod ones, it would also be interesting to know what they mean by that and how they perceive Strimsy as behaving differently and whether that's a common perception or not. And yeah, what they what they mean by that. Okay, you like this? Yep. Apart from all the typos. I would really put a, yeah, uh, emphasis on, yeah, contributing is a lot more than just writing code. You know? just, uh, just talking about streams is contributing. Reporting bugs. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, next one is about Java. So Java is easy, Java is great. I'm sure Java has a lot of future. So you can learn it on our good start issues, for example. But yeah, I guess there's not much we can change on it in the short term. Yeah, I guess the two things I'd add to this is for people who haven't looked at Java before or haven't looked at it recently, it has changed a lot and there's plenty of new features. So actually there's plenty of differences to Java now than years ago. So why not learn Java now? <laughs> But also, you mean, you mean with um, the years old Java 11 we are using? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's plenty more to come, right? Though um, Java's changing quite rapidly. So, actually, if people are wanting to learn Java, like potentially you can bring a lot of interesting perspectives with the new Java features that have come in and better ways we can be doing things, um, especially with a lot of the asynchronous Java changes that are happening. Um, but also, we do have the stale project, don't we, around a UI. So if people um, are front-end developers, then, you know, feel free to see if we could restart the front-end UI project. Um, and as you say, above documentation and all that, that kind of thing is also really useful. It really sounds like for people contributing is writing code. Uh, I think we should. It's, it's not the case. <laughs> and I think not to work other ways to contribute. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe there are plenty of other ways to contribute. Um, I think yeah. one, one key aspect, like proposal, I mean, what you put deep GitHub discussion, you don't need to know the internal, like you can just reason about the architecture of the, the algorithm in place, you know. Obviously, you don't know Java at all, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I right. guess it's going to be tricky. It's easy to say that there are other ways to contribute. That said, if you are, I don't know, Golang developer and you want to do Golang, de Golang development, then uh, yeah, the reality is that you might not be that excited to write documentation for some open source project just because it's written in Java, right? So. I, I kind of dislike with the right documentation. You know, say, oh, you can also write documentation, but uh, um, I think for tooling, it sounds like writing documentation is simple. You know, anybody can, <laughs> can write good documentation, which is usually not the case. But also for many yeah, engineers, writing documentation is not, you know, setting really a, <laughs> it's not really selling it, you know. So I think like uh, reporting bugs or, you know, or discussing like proposal is more like uh, engineering focus. Um, I don't know if you see what I mean, but uh, you know, it's like uh, I think it. I think promoting saying too much of this documentation is. It, I think it's a bit easy to say that, and at the same time, it's not really the answer people often want. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's um, definitely worth noting that even yeah, even if people don't know Java and or don't want to write Java that a lot of the discussions that happen in the proposals are more sort of how should a user make use of this and again with like the Kafka piece or like you know how should we interact with Kafka what steps should we take and so actually you don't need to know the ins and outs of Java for those discussions it's there's definitely plenty of discussions that are happening around Strunzi that where you don't have to have kind of looked at the code at all. Um, and I guess my point around Java changing a lot is that actually 
it's difficult if people don't want just don't want to write Java, but there are definitely interesting features that are being added to Java that mean some Java development is more similar to other languages than perhaps it has been in the past. But also it's worth noting, I guess, for people in the community who aren't aware, like one of the main reasons that Shrimzy is written in Java is obviously Kafka's written in Java in terms of things like using the admin API, like that makes sense. So that is why it, um, it has been written in Java. It wasn't kind of a random choice, I guess. But I think if there are other tools like UI or perhaps a CLI or things like that, it might be that other languages make sense for those. But most of the current contributors are familiar with Java. So it makes sense that we keep picking Java. <laughs> OK, does this capture it? Okay, next one is time. Guess not much we can do about it. Uh, there are also many small issues and again, different ways how to help. It's not always just working for a month on some big code contribution, but apart from that, Anyone anything else to this? Well, so I'm thinking about the so back to the question above. I mean, in the canaries in Golang, for example, you know, isn't there also the one of the matrix project we use also in written in Golang? So there are there are bits in the streams ecosystem <laughs> not in Java, right? The canary is in Golang but there are thoughts about rewriting it in Java. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But, uh, so it's in Golang. Yeah, but I'm not sure it, I'm not sure it's that great to kind of try to get people to write that Golang code if then one month later we decide to write it in Java. Yeah, I mean, if I, I fully agree with that. Like, isn't there also like a, one of the metrics too, like the reporter or something? But the Kafka exporter. Yeah, that's that not part of it? that's not part of Streamzy, but that's written in GoLang as well. Yeah. I, I would consider still that like contribution to Stream. It's like it's the ecosystem, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, sorry, I can go back to the other question. Now let's add it to the UI part. Okay. Two minutes before the end and we definitely don't manage to go through all of these hope we will finish today but i guess these five we should probably leave them for next time
I take the silence as an agreement. Yeah, yeah. especially as there, there seem to be a uh, more complex question as well, so we, can't, we won't be able to answer. Any... Yeah. So, yeah, and I added one more item, which was just for anyone who hadn't seen that there's going to be a community call on Thursday next week, so the 13th, I think it is, um, for a discussion of the current cruise control issues that people are currently working on the status of them so if anyone is um interested in the cruise control support in Strinzy and wants to get involved or hear about the current status then it's on the calendar yeah thanks for pointing it out okay so i guess that's it for today thanks everyone for joining and Thanks for your time. Thank you, bye. Thanks very much. Bye.